team challenge because none of us would be here if it wasn't for our friend Eric who gave up TV watching to spend his evenings in prayer. So it's powerful. It's very powerful. Yeah, we're so excited to be with you this morning, and I think the more time between walking in that door and sitting in these chairs, we're getting more excited because yeah. you guys are just incredible to be around. You're, um, there's like this spirit of unity in this room, and we're just united in passion about worshiping yeah. Jesus together. I don't know if I've ever been in a church where I can hear the congregation singing just as much as I can hear the worship team. Like, yeah. It's awesome. It's like I could shout. I was in front row and no one could hear that voice. So that was good. Uh, you're welcome, church. <laughs> so, uh, I'm joined by our team. I just want to acknowledge our team. We have Amanda, who um, had a word over her earlier, and Brooke, who is here as well. Amanda and Brooke are going to share their stories with you. And then we have Brooklyn here. I'll give a little wave. And Brooklyn is part of our team, and she's just coming up into that part of her program where she's going to be out and sharing um, her story in different churches. So she's getting a feel for what this is all about. And this is a really good first church to come to, I think. So, which is awesome. So thank you so much. And all I can say is I am so honored to be with these ladies. And um, they're incredible. I work with them as they work through uh, bits of their testimony, and I'm blown away. And God's faithfulness. We were singing that one song and it kept saying over and over, Lord, you're never going to let me down. Lord, yeah. you're never going to let me down. Lord, you're never going to let me down. And I'm, I, I was ruined up there. I'm ruined right now saying it. And uh, I mean, he, we've been to some deaths, my friends and I, and uh, he's never let us down. Oh, yeah. He's never let us down. And I couldn't wait to say hello to you all either because four years ago I stood here, I don't know if there was a stage even at that time, as a student in the Teen Challenge program. And I was new into sharing testimony and I told my story. And now I come to you four years later, I'm in my fifth year of sobriety. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I serve as a full-time staff member at Teen Challenge as a development officer. And that's, that's my Goliath <laughs> development. But the Lord is, it does incredible things in our offices. And last year, you had our counterpart. You had the men's team here. So we are so privileged that you have us out here today. And we're so thankful for your intentionality to have a pulse on the drug epidemic and what's going on. So thank you so much for that. And I just commend you for that, church. Um, and although we meet again today and we celebrate what God is doing, we all have our own unique story and we all have our challenges that life throws at us. Some of you could be walking through those right now. Some of you might be just coming out of those. And for some of you, this is laying the ground of preparation because some things might come. And so that's why this morning we come and we believe that God is going to do this morning what only he can do. Yeah. He's going to deposit yeah. hope. Where there's hopeless situations through our time together, we pray that you will be reminded that our God is very much alive and at work. He's still the miracle working God. He still performs transformation in our lives. So I'm going to open in prayer too, if that's okay. Oh. Lord, we just pray that you continue to just be with our team, be with us this morning as we take this time, Lord. Be with this group of people as we all join together. Father, soften hearts as only you can. We commit this time, yeah, this morning to you, as we, we celebrate this ministry. We celebrate Teen Challenge, and we celebrate it because you, Jesus, are yeah. in the middle of it. Yeah. It doesn't work without you in the middle of it, Jesus. Yeah. And we thank you that we love because you first loved us. You're God who redeems. You're a God of restoration. You're a God of miracles. You're a God of transformation. Yes. Oh, Lord, make yourself known through our yes. stories today. Yes, God. We love you. Be glorified. Be glorified. Yeah, Lord. Amen. Amen. So most of you probably already do know what we're all about at Teen Challenge, but in case you don't, I'm going to let you know. Um, but we are a 12-month, we're faith-based, and we're a rehabilitation center. So we help numerous women and men at our men's centers across Canada come and help them to find freedom from overcoming uh, drug and alcohol addictions. We're not government funded, we're a registered Canadian charity. And our graduates return to their families, their children, their spouses, their careers, and they live full and productive lives. 
which is awesome. I, what I love about Teen Challenge mission statement is it's not just about the men and women overcoming drug and alcohol addiction, it continues on to say so that they will meet their full potential. That's actually part of ingraining what we do, which is so cool. Um, Teen Challenge is supported by student sponsors and donors who give to our organization. And do we have any sponsors? In us today. Awesome. Thank you so much. I just want to acknowledge you because we can't do what we do without the sponsorship. So thank you. And many don't realize that the cost um, for the actual program is about $50,000 a student. So our students come in and we pay a one-time application fee and then a one-time uh, intake of $1,000. So $1,100 is what uh, a student would spend to come in. So you can truly see we can't do what, what we're doing without the support of folks like yourselves. So our hope today is that as we share, many of you will um, be stirred and come and join our Teen Challenge family and maybe partner with one of the ladies who are here today as their student sponsor. So please join us this morning. We're going to celebrate freedom, celebrate change lives. We're going to play a brief video. I think it's, it's good to go. Yep. And um, wonderful. And really, I think it's just an easier way to sum up. Uh, what we do, I could probably tell you for 45 minutes, but this will do it in three, so I'll... <laughs> I will Teen Challenge it. Canada is a faith-based residential program that helps adult men and women overcome drug and alcohol addictions. Each person comes with a story. Some dull their pain with marijuana, others abuse prescription pills, alcohol, cocaine, methamphetamines, or crack. All have lost control of their lives. They're business owners, skilled tradesmen, computer programmers, general laborers, and hairdressers. Because of their addictions, their lives are littered with destruction, broken marriages, failed education, lost jobs, defaults in mortgages, and children taken away. To meet the growing need for addiction treatment in Canada, Teen Challenge operates six sites across the country for adults over the age of 18. Through basic biblical principles, students in our program can learn that they are valued and can contribute to society. Best of all, they discover that God gives them hope, freedom, and a tomorrow. Teen Challenge founder David Wilkerson taught these same principles. He started the organization in 1958 in New York City. His pioneering work resulted in more than 1,100 centers in 92 countries. In our holistic program, men and women get healthy in body, mind, and spirit as they eat nutritious food, exercise regularly, and connect with God. With help from our staff and certified addictions counselors, students identify root issues, bullying, dysfunctional families, divorce, death of a loved one, rejection, abandonment, and abuse. These and other deep hurts drive people to drugs and alcohol for relief. Preparing to live productively, they learn to balance a checkbook, use a computer, and speak publicly. Students are guided to become better parents and spouses. Through work duty and internships, valuable job skills are gained. Those who have not completed high school are assisted to get their GED. You can help even more men and women start a new life through Teen Challenge. Take a tour at one of our six centers to find out more about our ministry volunteer, you can mentor a man or a woman or share a skill with our students, celebrate with us at a student graduation ceremony, attend a fundraiser, choose from a golf class, a freedom ride silent auction, a fundraising banquet, or our annual Christmas concert. Invite the Teen Challenge Choir to perform at your church or community group. Pray. Your ongoing prayers enable our students to overcome challenges. Sponsor a student for just $40 a month. Your financial support and notes of encouragement keep our students motivated to stay in the program. Consider a one-time gift toward our operating expenses or a special project. Together, we can make a difference in the lives of those struggling with addictions. going to turn this over to Amanda who's going to come up and share her story. So if you give her a warm welcome as well. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous. It doesn't matter how many times I do it. I'm just as nervous. Okay. Yes. I'm going to start off with Micah 7, verse 8. 
Do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Hello, my name is Amanda, and this is my mess for Jesus' message. I was raised in a small town in Labrador with my dad, mom, and two sisters. I grew up in a very, very close, loving family, and I have great memories as a child, full of family activities. One of my favorite memories is when my dad built us a skating rink in the backyard, and after we were done skating, we would come into the house, and my mom would have hot chocolate ready for us. I also live next door to my nan, who is a Christian. Even though my parents didn't go to church, she made sure that us girls went to church, went to Sunday school every Sunday until I was 12. I was a very outgoing child who loved to make other people laugh, um, until the age of seven. This is when I became sexually abused when I, until I was 11. I believe that it was my entire fault, and from that day on, a darkness came over my life, which I called guilt and shame. This started my life of running and numbing my feelings. At the age of 12, I started to dis distance myself from family, and I stopped going to church because I felt God was leading me to tell my parents about the molestation, but I just couldn't do it. I felt that they would blame it on me as well. So I started to find things that would numb my truth and run from the voice of God. This is when I started to drink, smoke weed, take ecstasy, and begin to hang out with older men. At the age of 16, I became pregnant with my first child with a guy who was 10 years older than me. A child is supposed to bring joy into our lives, but because I've spent the first, the last four years knowing God's truth, all I was listening to were the lies of the enemy. And he was telling me how shameful it was for me to have a baby at 16 years, 16 years old and that I have ruined my life. But after having my daughter, the love of her became strong, stronger than the lies of the enemy and the shame. For three years, I stayed clean and sober, but I ended up pregnant again, and I made the choice to have an abortion. That day, the lies I heard about myself since I, would be seven, since I was seven became truth within me. I went back to drinking, drugs, and older men. I was in so much darkness that the love of my daughter could not get me out of it. Then at the age 21, I had my second daughter. I was so happy because I hoped her love could get me out of the darkness. But not, but not only three months of having her, I met cocaine, and we, we fell in love. We made the guilt and shame I've been carrying for most of my life gone. But not only did it take away, take away the guilt and shame, it took away every feeling I could feel, even the love that me and my kids shared. So for the next six years, cocaine consumed me. Also during this time, I had my third and my fourth child. While I was using, my last child was only one pound and six ounces, and spent the first six months of his life in the hospital. It's only by the grace of God that they are alive today. Psalms 107, 10, 13. Some sat in, utter dark, in darkness, in utter darkness, prisoners suffering in iron chains, because they rebelled against God's commands, and despised the plans of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor, and they stumbled, and there was no, no one to help them. They cried out to the Lord, and in their, and in their trouble, he saved them from their destruction. And in April 2014, I heard God's voice telling me once again to tell my parents about what happened to me when I was younger, but I still refused. And this is when this scripture became true for my life. Because after, about two weeks after that, I lost my kids, and my family didn't want anything to do with me. Then not a week later, I met a guy who sold cocaine. And I started doing so much to the point of almost overdosing so many times. And it, and we, all we would do it was fight, and it led me to get 31 charges. I was so scared that I was going to die. See, I stumbled, and there was no one there to help me. I cried out to the Lord and told him I would tell my parents, which I did, and he saved me. He sent me to the Oxford Church, and I got saved in November of 2014. Yeah. <laughs> the group of cocaine did not want to let go. For six months later, there was a battle for my soul. In May of 2015, I ended. I had enough of this battle, and I went to my mom's closet, and I was about to commit suicide when two cops came in and arrested me, and I was sentenced to two months in jail. While in jail, I started to crave God and His Word instead of cocaine. After I got out, the pastor came to me and told me about Teen Challenge, 
and on August 11, 2015, I entered the doors. Since coming here, um, I've realized that no one's love, but only the love of God, is what could keep me out of darkness. And I've been set free from bondage of shame and guilt through God's mercy and grace. I'm, so, I'm learning so much about God's truth, which is replacing the lies of the enemy. I'm learning not to be led by my feelings, because they lie and change many times a day. I'm learning to give and receive love, even on the days that I'm not so easy loved, all because God's love. I'm becoming a mother the way God has always claimed me. He is teaching me how to have a godly relationship, with a, which is based on truth. I have also been sober as of today for eight months. Praise God. Every saint has a past, and every sinner has a future. And it doesn't matter what kind of utter darkness you are sitting in. Just cry out to the Lord, and He will save you, and you will give, He will give you the strength you need. Isaiah 61 said, "Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. Instead of your disgrace, you will receive your inheritance. And so you will, and so you will inherit the double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours." Thank you. Self-image. 
It became common that I would accept an opportunity to drink, and when I turned 19, I had the freedom to buy myself. The summer of 2014 was a good one in my memory, but for the wrong reasons. My anorexia made me feel successful, uh, and at that point, my drinking wasn't heavy. I felt like I had both my hunger and drinking under control. Then I went to university, and this is where things began to fall apart. I mentioned that I almost uh, completed the school year. Um, when I left university, um, I actually lost a lot of the control that anorexia had given me, so I developed bulimia. And bulimia and the alcohol was beginning to reach a climax um, when I left in September. So that's when I realized that I had a problem. I was willing to admit it. I got worse as the school year progressed because I tried suppressing my emotions and attempting to hide my issues. The university's campus is dry, no alcohol is allowed as a rule. Having an addiction meant I couldn't uphold it, and I got caught three times with alcohol in my room. I can't describe, I begin to describe the shame, guilt, and fear I, I felt reading the notice that I was to leave the campus and stay off of it till the end of the school year. I quit two things. First, I quit school. Second, I quit alcohol. It had taken enough. I wouldn't let it take anything more. Two dry months went by, and I figured I'd proven to myself and others that I could keep my drinking under control. This eventually brought on a binge that led to being kicked out of my parents' house. More fear, more shame, more pain, more booze. I began to rent a room in town, but I found no ha happiness in my independence. My lifestyle wore me out. Three months went by, and my parents and I finally got back into contact. I admitted to having a problem, and we began to discuss what to do from there. We began looking at rehab facilities. I told my parents that there was no way I would willingly stay in any program for longer than 30 days. If you told me I would enter a 365-day program and stay in it for more than five months, I, would, I wouldn't have believed you. I have been recovering from bulimia and alcoholism. Every single day is difficult, some more than others. I look at every day in the program as having a choice. I choose to walk in life in love and in happiness. I choose to walk in the hope and realization that recovery is achievable, and I choose to believe that this power is in my hands, not in the hands of others or of my circumstances. Every day I choose to be still and know that he is God and to listen to him. And every day is another day I'm so glad I made the choice to stay. As I look back at my passion and at the addiction, I realize that what my dad said to me when I was so young had come true. Throughout all the nights, the weekends, and the drinking that had kept me away from home, estranged from my family, I always had a roof over my head. I was always safe with someone, uh, safe with someone, someone who, uh, who cared. Miraculously, I had stayed safe and mostly out of trouble. When I first became attendant in that strange new place, I stuck my hand out of the bed sheets, and there it was, the air current flowing around my bed. Those were the angels guarding me as I stumbled through the most confusing and destructive part of my past. My name is Brooke, and I'm a dog of God. <laughs> Super powerful. Right? It's a super powerful story. My own story of overcoming addiction and freedom wouldn't exist without Teen Challenge. And the reality is that without Teen Challenge on the front lines of the drug epidemic, my story, Amanda's, Brooks, Brooklyn's, they wouldn't be here. It was the end of 2011 and I had made a mess of my life. I was newly married and I was living a double life. I was a young entrepreneur, and on the outside, my life appeared all put together. However, in reality, I was a woman who was full of shame, and I was spiraling deeper and deeper into an addiction. How did I get to this place? For me, the pattern was this. Whenever life got hard, using drugs and alcohol increased. And life got hard when my husband and I were ready to have a family, and were hit with the news that due to health issues, this would be difficult, if at all even possible, for us. The future I had always wanted was shattered, and what I realized now is I had an identity crisis on my hands. I thought I was on earth to be a mother, but my reality wasn't lining up with this. What on earth was I created to do, and who on earth was I created to be? This crisis led me further and further into a lifestyle of partying, getting high, and being unfaithful to my marriage. When my secrets became more than I could hide, I was facing my very current husband, who agreed with me that divorce would be the only way to fix things. During this discussion, I lost my temper. My husband fled the house, and about two hours later, I was charged with domestic assault. As desperate calls from the police station to my so-called friends went unanswered, this quickly became what I call my rock bottom. 
through what can only be a series of God-ordained events, it was within eight weeks that I entered the doors of Teen Challenge. What I can tell you is that I believe that Teen Challenge saved my life. I don't know where I would be without this program. And as any one of the ladies who are joining here with me today would probably agree, surrendering to this program and sticking to this commitment is not easy. Throughout my time at Teen Challenge, I discovered the love of Jesus. I discovered his faithfulness, his relentless love, and I learned that my identity is rooted in him, not my circumstances. There's a word for someone. It's a good word, right? By the end of 2012, I completed the program, I graduated, and I returned home to my husband, Paul. It took a lot of work on our part, but God did most of it, and he did a miraculous work of healing and restoration in our marriage. We never got a divorce. Praise the Lord. And it's kind of like a back-to-back -back praise report, because two weeks after graduation, I was pregnant with our daughter, who was down to a back-to-back-to-back praise report because I actually have a son who's due in July who's up here on stage. So, praise the Lord. Since the program, I have led a women's Bible study, I've life coached a young woman, I've volunteered as a Sunday school teacher, and as you know, I serve full-time in the ministry that saved my life. And I don't tell you those things to brag on myself. I tell you those things because when it comes to talking about graduates of Teen Challenge, I am not an anomaly. This program works. We have graduates who have returned to redeemed marriages, returned to their children. Some have married very godly men and they have children of their own that they're raising up into the word. And I actually believe that the woman who was with me in 2012 sharing her story uh, is one of those women that I'm referencing. And others have started into the workforce. They have very reputable careers. And in some cases, we have uh, some women who are into university and college now. Other graduates completely changed their course. We have one woman who's entered into full-time ministry in Toronto, and she's reaching the lost in practical ways. Another woman has a prominent leadership role in an organization that helps hurting women. Others have gone on missions trips, and the list goes on. It's amazing because when we're in addiction, we can be such a burden on our social system. But after successfully completing the Teen Challenge program, we become those productive and contributing members to our society and our communities. So, that's awesome. Teen Challenge goes way beyond helping someone to just get clean. There's a couple ways that you can come alongside us and support what God is doing in our ministry. And we're going to be giving you an opportunity this morning to partner with us through monthly sponsorship. Um, by becoming a student sponsor, and we're always facing special financial challenges, so I encourage you to think about this today, about how you can help. And really, the first way you can help us is through prayer, and I love that that's how we ended up starting, as mixed up as we kind of got at the beginning there. It was important to touch on prayer, because <laughs> we, Teen Challenge is birthed out of prayer. And so please pray for our students, pray for our staff, and pray for provisions to be met. The sec second way you can help us is you can always give a one-time gift toward our organization. Anything, um, any gift that you give, $20 and over, you get the tax receipt. And the third way you can help us is becoming a monthly student sponsor. And going into this program is so hard, and it's not easy to live away, even when your husband had you arrested, it's not easy to live away from them. <laughs> it's not easy to be away in some women's um, situations, to be away from children. And so when you enter into that student sponsorship um, with a student, you're really becoming a part of their journey and uh, being a part of her story. And everyone here today, we were trying to get these in. This is this Change of Life brochure tells you a little bit about our program, but it also provides you with that opportunity if you'd like to sign up as a student sponsor. And uh, it's $40 a month, and it'll immediately connect you with one of the women in the program. And what you'll get, you'll get a story card, which looks like this. This is my story card. And uh, it's a little bio about the students, so it tells you um, a little bit about where they're from, what they're their issues were that they're overcoming and how you could be praying for them and, and for their future so that's very cool and as a as a uh, sponsor you get encouragements or you can send your student encouragements you can get an invitation that you'll be able to attend their graduation 
And for some people, if a student sponsorship isn't for you, they can now offer center sponsorships. So that's where you can give a monthly toward the center, and we'll just uh, keep you updated on what's going on at, at our women's center. So really, our monthly sponsors, whether it be those student sponsors or the monthly sponsors, center sponsors, it's the greatest way that you can connect into what Teen Challenge, what's going on, what God's doing at Teen Challenge. And if you're already a part of this, as some of you had noted earlier today, you know how important this is to us. So thank you so much. And really, my goal would be that I would love for us to um, find some new sponsors for Amanda Brooke in Brooklyn this morning. And I mean, like you said, keep in mind that tuition, it takes about 104 sponsors per student. And I'll be honest with you, this is an area that our center is in need of. So. Um, if this is something you think God's leading you to do, please come and see myself and come and see the team at the table and we can help you out with that today and get you connected. So we have story cards you can even sign up and take home with you today. And lastly, I want to invite you all out. I know you get lots of invites, but I want to invite you to our upcoming gala, which is in a week and a half. I don't know, do you have anything on Thursday the 21st? Apparently you're all free. <laughs> And we have Reverend Angel Valentine, who is an original Teen Challenge student out of Brooklyn, New York, and he's hilarious. He leaves one of the funniest messages. He might be in his 60s or something, but he's not lost. He's a Puerto Rican and a Brooklyn accent. And uh, he says, yo, girl. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So it, he's going to have just a powerful story of transformation that he's going to share. And I'm really excited because God really laid it on my heart and the teen's heart who planned something like this just to connect into the stories of transformation and help communicate those with partners like yourselves. Um, and so we have graduates, and it's not just myself, we have graduates that will share their stories of what they've gone on to do, as well as students in the program. The choir is going to be there, so it's going to be an awesome evening. And we have tickets for sale here too, so there's $60 a ticket, and we can do tables up to eight too. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite you back up to close. I think we're pretty much we're good, and thank you so much, church. Come and see us at the table. If you or anyone you know is struggling with an addiction, we have material at the table about our program and the resource that we are too that we can send home with you. So don't hesitate to stop by for that bit of info too. So thank you so much. Thanks again. Amen. Let's go ahead. I want to uh, just read this real quick, and that's something that Amanda had, uh, he, she had actually talked about, and I just read the scripture in Micah, uh, chapter 7 and 8, it says, Do not rejoice over me, O my enemy, though I fall, I will rise, though I dwell in darkness, the Lord is the light for me. You know, God is light, and in him there is no darkness, Amen. And one of the things that I don't want to see as a pastor is anyone carry shame. Anyone carry condemnation? I mean, if you if you actually heard um, Amanda Brooke and Jenny speak, shame was a major part of their life, right? And shame can be a major part of our life. That's one of the greatest tools that Satan uses to destroy our lives is shame, right? Now we know that Satan wants us to hold secret sin. He wants us to be bound up, and he wants to control us. Okay, I don't, it, it doesn't matter to me what anyone has been involved in or is involved in. The point of the matter is we want you to be set free from it. Amen? Amen. Amen. We, we, we are horrible at sin. It's, it's, it's horrible. And we want to see it gone. So if you are struggling with anything, please. Uh, one of the things that I, I thought was great, um, you know, was when Brooks said, I finally admitted that I had a problem. There are people that are in denial, that are in problems, that have uh, addictions and different things, and you, you won't admit it. You say, I can overcome it, I can, and you keep saying, I can, I can, I can, and then you never do. Well, we don't want you to be in that place. The Bible actually talks about the prodigal son. It says he came to his senses, and he said, I need to return home to my father. There's a time in our lives when we need to come to our senses. Yeah. And so if anyone is struggling in any kind of way with anything, we want to encourage you 
to talk to uh, any of any of uh, the elders, or deacons, any of the staff at uh, Teen Challenge, because we want to see everyone set free. Amen? Amen. Even the sun sets free is free indeed. Yeah. Why don't we stand this morning? Testimonies are so powerful, aren't they? They're so powerful. As each one was speaking, I don't know about you, but my spirit bore witness with their spirit. Amen? And uh, if anyone is struggling in any kind of way with shame, guilt, denial, whatever, we want to see you set free today. And we're going to have uh, the worship team called up, and we're going to sing another song. But I just want to encourage you that if today, you know what, you say, maybe I'm not addicted to something, but maybe I'm not where I should be with the Lord. Maybe I'm not in that place of relationship that I once was. Maybe the passion that I had for God is not at the same level. Maybe I can look at David Brainerd and say, as a missionary, he was a sickly individual who wasn't much to look at, but he has a purpose for each one here. Yeah. Everyone has a plan. Everyone has a purpose. You are not an accident. You are not an oops. You are not a mistake. God made you special. Yeah. And he has a call in your life that's different from everyone else's. And it's special and it's wonderful and it's unique. And Satan wants to come and destroy it. He wants to end your life and destroy it. And so today, if you say, you know what, I'm not where I should be with the Lord, and you want to come down and receive prayer, we'd love to pray for you. If you say, you know what, I don't know Jesus, that all of these people are talking about, today, the Bible says, is the day of salvation. Today is the day where you can come down and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and begin the walk that all of these wonderful ladies have talked about. The walk with Jesus, putting your hand in His hand. And seeing deliverance come. Amen. If that's you and you want to say yes to Jesus today, we just invite you to come down. If you need a special touch from God, you just, you know, you need to be set on fire for Him. Come down. Please don't wait. Come down. He's He's here today. Amen. Amen. He's here. Just come down and we're gonna we're gonna sing a song. And if that's you, just feel free. Amen. Blessings to you.